Welcome to Put Some Metal on the Pedal, and thank you for your patience. We have a pretty full house today and just wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to, to log in. Um, so many of our customers equate metallic threads with winter holidays that we thought it would be useful to talk to you about metallic threads in June. I'm Alice Wolf, the Marketing Communications Director with Madeira USA, and I'm joined by Nancy Minnie, our Senior Marketing Specialist and Resident Embroiderer, and Rich Medcraft, owner of Stitchwise Embroidery Design in Eagle Point, Oregon. Today we'd like to point out some of the attributes of metallic embroidery threads. We're going to show you how easy they are to master and how many of them will fit right into a stock design. We'll show how they can help to set you apart from your competitors and how the addition of metallic thread can often enable you to charge more for your services. Behind the scenes, we've been working with Dakota Collectibles in order to help us prove that you can substitute a metallic thread for a 40 weight in many stock designs with results that are sparkling and unique. They've even offered to let us share one of the designs we'll talk about with you at no charge. Our goals for today include eliminating the fear factor. We'll show you examples of how easily we've integrated metallic threads into stock designs. Nancy and Rich will describe how they did it, what to keep in mind, and we'll answer your questions in hopes of inspiring you to give these threads a try, whether or not you do your own digitizing. Madeira USA offers so many different metallic embroidery threads that we chose just some to concentrate on today. We're going to zero in on four. FS50, FS40, Super Twist number 30, and Soft number 40. We've chosen these four for three very important reasons. All of them are the easiest to run of the full metallic line that Madeira offers. Most of them can be substituted into a stock design without any change at all. And one of them in particular is very economical. And we'll be going into detail with examples of each throughout this webinar. Rich, I know that you are a big fan of FS50, so if you would start, please, that would be great. Okay. Well, I, um, I'm a digitizer, and I uh, do a lot of corporate logos, and um, I have found that this is probably the, the most friendly of all the metallic that I've ever run across. In fact, any of you out there, um, if you're like new with a metallic thread and maybe a little fearful of trying it, um, I highly recommend starting with this thread because it's extremely easy to use. And what I mean by that is you don't have to adjust the digitizing. Uh, you don't have to change needles necessarily. Uh, the tensioning is easy. It runs really well on your machine. It's strictly a matter of picking one of the colors and substituting it with an existing part of your design and giving it a try. And what I've found is that it's a terrific thread uh, if you want to try to maybe impress a special customer. Um, I don't know about some of you out there, but every year I'm always asked to kind of show a, a customer something new. And, of course, sometimes you can do that with garments or whatever new hats that come out. But a lot of times it's, it, it, this is a great way to do that is to substitute this FS50 uh, and run it in, in, uh, in, in one of the designs and then show it to them. And I think you'll be surprised on how easy it is to run and uh, how it will impress your customers. Um, anyway, that's, this is, like I said, a great thread to start with, and it's extremely easy to use, and I highly recommend it. Thank you, Rich. Um, also, we had a couple people write in that you're a little bit hard to hear. So while Nancy shows us some examples of designs with FS50, next time you're up, if you could pretty much shout into, the, into your mic, that would be appreciated. Okay, I'll try. Maybe that's a little bit better. Uh, we'll see when we come back. Let's take a look at some designs. Okay. Hi there. Um, so Dakota Collectibles, um, you saw on a slide before, they um, provided us with a lot of the designs that you're going to see here. Um, some of them were digitized specifically um, by Rich Medcraft, um, but this particular design um, was provided by Dakota Collectibles. Really pretty design. It's actually um, it's, it's a good size design. It's five inches by six inches, and it has over 52,000 stitches with 17 color changes. So it's a pretty complex design as far as that goes. 
Um, but when I looked at this design, I thought it was really pretty. Um, the flowers in it were really um, nice, so it gave me a little bit of, um, I started kind of small here and just added a little bit of metallic. Um, so most of this design itself is classic gray on thread, which is a really nice looking thread. Um, but inside the, the, uh, inside the centers of the flowers, put some nice um, FS50, a real brilliant gold there. Um, so a little bit of metallic there, but on the actual statue that you're seeing there, it looks like a fairy sitting on top of a, um, a mushroom. So it's, I, I envision that kind of like a concrete-like statue. Um, so outlining that classic rayon grayish color, I used a silver metallic. So it just added a little bit of bling on the statue itself. So kind of complex design, went a little bit simple with the metallic that we added here, um, but it really has a great effect. Also want to point out that, you know, um, catching metallic thread and the effects that it can have in photographs or on your monitors was a challenge um, to do so. So in order to get um, to do the best that we could with that, we did actually hire a professional photographer to help us get um, the best clarity we could get with those. And by blowing them up, um, that did help a little bit as well. So um, as nice as they do look on the screen, um, they look even better in person, so um, keep that in mind when you are looking at them. These are a couple more designs um, donated to us by Dakota Collectibles. A um, little bit more on the simpler side, especially with the grill on the left side. That one um, looked at the design, doesn't have a real lot of stitches, it's not a real big design, um, but it I immediately thought of a, a stainless steel looking grill out there, and then of course on the the tines on the fork, um, used a contrasting metallic um, as opposed to the, the brilliant silver that's on the actual grill itself. So added in that black and red classic rayon and kind of give it a nice classic um, look to it. And um, the burgundy T-bone steak there looks good enough to eat. And on the other side is a bucket full of flowers, kind of looks like a teacher's um, a bouquet that they might have on their desk. A lot of um, pencil pads of paper and rulers in there. A um, little apple right in the middle, which is pretty cool. But um, I, I looked at the actual um, the pail that the flowers are sitting in and did that in a classic rayon. But again, just outlined it with those um, running stitches with the metallic thread and everything else that you see, kind of gold um, running stitches going around the the ruler, the swirlies that are inside the flowers on the vines, um, little metallic there as well. So it, it gave a nice little, uh, gave a nice contrast against the classic rayon thread itself. So these are um, stock, simple stock designs um, that are digitized for your 40 weight rayon or polyester. And FS50 is a real great um, thread that you can just easily put um, substitute in where you where you see it would work really well. Um, somebody does have a question that came in that says, is 50 heavier than 30? Uh, when it actually comes to thread, um, the higher the number, the thinner the thread. So 50 weight is actually thinner. Um, it's a nice thin thread. So slightly thinner than your 40 weight standard thread. Um, actually kind of similar um, when it comes to the actual diameter of the, or the thickness of the thread itself. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you can actually easily substitute that 50 weight thread in. Um, here's another screen of a couple more designs, actually two different types of designs. The one in the left was actually digitized specifically for 50 weight thread. Um, Rich will probably get into the details of any digitizing that may or may not need to be altered. This one, it's very similar to your 40 weight thread, but it was made for 50 weight thread. And it gave us the ability to include the multiple silvers and golds that are available in 50 weight thread. Um, and it actually has some really nice, nice detailing um, within this design as well. On the right side is another stock design off of Dakota Collectibles website. And this one, when I was looking at it, it was very easy to see where I could put some metallic thread. Being a snowflake, um, I did put that part of it in a nice, brilliant um, FS50 silver. But on the inside is mostly classic rayon. So it really had a nice contrast having that scene within the, um, the snowflake itself. Simple designs, um, easily substitute in that FS metallic. 
Rich, would you be able to talk a little bit about your angel and about the Florida Lee that was digitized by our friend Pat Williams? Sure. Um, the uh, FS50, as I mentioned, is a real easy thread to use. And um, I digitized the angel on the left. It's, of course, all one color. But they're relatively thin columns uh, that make up this design. And uh, it ran beautifully. It just uh, is a wonderful thread to try. Um, one thing that you know Nancy has done really well, and she had a lot of fun experimenting and, and with different colors and different types of metallic thread and substituting. And uh, that's what I'd like to encourage all of you out there to do is, uh, is, to, is to have fun with some of this new thread that's available and to take some time to uh, play a little bit because it's, it's amazing what you can discover and offer uh, to your customer if you get a chance to do that. Um, the uh, one thing I would suggest with all metallic thread is um, if you're digitizing it specifically for metallic, uh, keep in mind that usually it's best, um, not so much with FS50, but some of the other heavier threads especially, uh, to keep your stitch length a little bit longer. So specifically, if um, let's say 1.8 millimeter stitch length is something that you use for your common running stitch, uh, increase that length a little bit, um, two, two and a half millimeter. Um, also, your uh, densities, you can usually go a little bit lighter with um, with metallics. In this particular case, with FS50, that's not necessarily a problem. You can run regular density. But um, the best, prettiest stitches, I think, with metallics are, of course, satin stitches. But amazingly enough, I love using um, some running stitches with metallic, as Nancy has shown in some of the examples. That uh, doesn't necessarily always look good in, in, believe it or not, regular thread, unless it's a dark color, like on an outline stitch. But with the uh, with the metallics, it's it's uh, beautiful, and uh, Nancy will show some of that in future designs. Rich, another example of your work. Sure. Um, here's an example again of just playing around. I I digitized the Sondar trucking logo. This has been a long, long time ago, but. Um, anyway, just for fun, I wanted to see what it would look like uh, where the gold Sondar lettering was to see what would, what would happen if I substituted um, the FS50. And I just basically uh, ran the design the same as before, but to the thread. And it just gave it another kind of a little bit of bling and uh, made it a little more interesting. Um, and so it was kind of fun to do. But again, just trying different colors, different threads, and this FS50. 50 really makes it um, a, a snap to do. Thank you. Let's uh, let's go back to Nancy again and take a look at um, some more stock designs. Um, so here's a pretty elegant looking teapot, or I should say tea set, comes along with the um, the cup and saucer with it, and it was a really pretty design again that I found on Dakota Collectibles website, and it. Um, it lent itself to me very well to putting some metallic in there. I envisioned this teapot being a porcelain type teapot um, and seeing a little bit of gold metallic on the cup and the saucer, um, it was an easy spot to put the gold metallic that was available in the FS50. Um, but it's the design, um, it's the silver stitching on the teapot, I think that is really elegant. And Rich was just mentioning that earlier. Um, Usually if you did something like this and you did it in a darker contrast, you know, it would look okay and it would look nice, um, but by putting the silver on top of the slightly off-white color that was used for the porcelain, it really um, made that design stand out. And I just love the opportunity to put the gold on top of the, the cup itself and around the edge of the saucer. Um, I've certainly seen many um, China uh, sets with that type of an off, um, that type of a gold outline so I thought it looked really pretty on this one um, kind of a, it, it's not a real complex not a real big design it's only three inches by three and a half inches and only 16,000 stitches um, and there's just eight color changes in there but um, the I think the metallic really uh, made this design stick out nicely Um, we um, just to let you know, um, we are going to be if we're not answering your questions during the webinar, and if we don't capture them as we're moving along, um, we may have time at the end to address a few. Um, we're hoping to be able to do that. But any questions that don't get answered, um, we will be following up after the webinar. So I wanted to make sure that you're all aware of that. And um, 
here's another design that um, real simplistic design here and um, I liked the letter M um, in this instance it had that um, kind of cross hatching almost like a, a double lattice underlay that's inside the M and when I first saw this design I thought oh that would be a great place to put the metallic thread maybe outline it with a little bit of rayon um, ended up just being a one color design um, so I went ahead and stitched out the whole design itself in the metallic thread and that's what you're seeing on the left side the FS50 silver and up above it you can see it's enlarged and by putting it on an angle as we took the picture it really um, was able to capture the shine that that smooth FS metallic thread would do. So I wanted to see what it would look like compared to a couple of other threads so the classic rayon itself similar color we did in the um, the middle M there and on the right side we went one step further and used the frosted matte or the matte finish thread that has zero shine in it. So by just switching out um, or using three different types of threads, you get three totally different looks. Um, somebody wrote in, how does this wash up? Um, how does it hold up to um, for a garment washing and whatnot? Um, the metallic threads are very sturdy. Um, they come with the laundering instructions um, and things like that that will be available for you if you do purchase this or it's available on online as well, but um, completely wash and wear. Um, products as well, you know, much similar to the rayon and polyester. Uh, before we move on to the next metallic thread, two quick review questions. Um, Nancy, someone is asking about the, the rim, the metallic rim on the teapot. Did you simply just put that on or was it digitized specifically for it? It was actually part of the design, um, but that's the nice thing about FS50 is you can look at the designs. Um, they work really well in satin built, um, satin stitches, the running stitches, FS50 can be used um, in your tatami or fill complex fill stitches as well. Um, but I simply just looked at the design and as we're going through these, the intent is to show you how um, easily you can take these designs and choose where you want to put the metallic. So these are literally just a stock design where I said, you know, they may have just had a classic rayon color chosen for this design, um, but I chose an alternate metallic. Um, so it was, it was not digitized, it was a, a stock design, which most of your stock designs that are available out there are digitized for 40 weight rayon or polyester. Um, so again, this 50 weight uh, metallic thread can easily be substituted in to those designs. Just, we're kind of showing you where they work well. Um, and you know, you can try pretty much anything when you're, when you're using, especially this thread here, and then you'll find what works well and what doesn't work well. And Rich, quickly, just review on your angel. Was that a, a satin stitch that you used for that? Yes, it was yes. all satin. Okay, thank you. Um, Rich, could you tell us a little bit about 40 weight, your experience with that? Well, uh, the 40 weight, again, is a, I think is a real easy thread to use. Um, uh, you tend to, if you're digitizing for, um, for this thread, you can pretty much use standard densities although you can actually lighten it a little bit if you're doing that. Again, we're talking usually substituting threads, so those of you that are not digitizers, you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, what I like about, uh, about metallic thread, I, I tend to be um, a little more conservative in how I like um, my designs to come out. And again, I do a lot of corporate logos, so sometimes I don't, you know, my customers may not necessarily want to um, let's say, have a, a design that really screams at, 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 at people when, when they're uh, showing it. But by blending metallic thread, in other words, using some of it uh, uh, with regular thread, you get just a little bit of extra um, bling and interest in the design. And that's what I like about this thread is there, there's a, a lot of different colors you can use with it. And uh, by um, blending it with a regular thread, you can get some real interesting looks. Again, uh, you can use just your standard needle, which is kind of nice, the 7511, um, and uh, it runs really nicely. It, it trims well, it tensions well. Nothing special you have to do. Um, just experiment, and uh, I think you'll be amazed what you can come up with. And just as a quick review, the FS40 is slightly thicker than the FS50 that we talked about earlier, but just like it, you do not have to change your needle. You can stick with the 7511. 
Um, and now let's take a look at some examples of designs with FS40. Okay, so here's another stock design, um, kind of a simplistic, not a lot of stitches in here. There's not a, um, any heavy fills in here, um, but I did see the opportunity to put some FS40 thread in here along with another metallic thread that I'll get into as well. Um, but starting on the bottom left there is this design that was done how it was intended or how it was suggested um, that came along with the design, um, putting the yellow gold looking um, copy sealed with a kiss there on the top and the lips done in a pink and an outline done in a red. So it looks like some pretty nice lipstick on those lips. Um, but when I um, looked at the design for some metallic potential there, I said, well, that copy could easily be changed over with the FS40. So I went ahead and put the gold, a really nice brilliant gold. Um, you see it blown up on the right side and you can really see that metallic shine as it's blown up. That's what it looks like in real life as well. The lips themselves, I kept the pink in the classic rayon, um, but then I chose another type of metallic that we're gonna get into a little bit more detail later on. It's one of the ones we are highlighting today, the Super Twist 30 thread. This is a really sparkly thread as opposed to the FS metallics that are shiny. Um, so it has a twist, and so I chose a nice red to outline those pink lips. And again, over on the right where it's blown up, you can see that thread actually sparkle. Um, so it, it took a, a, an ordinary design, um, done a classic rayon, and it looks nice, and gave it a real pizzazz by putting some metallic in there. A um, couple of people have written in, you know, do you slow your machine down with metallics? It really depends on the metallic you're using. Um, the FS40s and 50s, I find very often you can just run them at whatever speed you normally run your machine at. But if you are finding um, that you're tr running into trouble, then absolutely slow that machine down a little bit. Just slowing it down 50 stitches a minute can make a big difference. Um, needles are important when it comes to metallics. Again, FS40 and 50, there's really not much you have to change, which is what's really nice about these two. Um, the FS40, um, is available in a little more colors um, than the FS50. So that's the advantage of it on top of the fact that it is a little bit thicker. So it just has a little bit more of an impact um, when you're embroidering on it. So if you're looking for some thin letters in metallic, stick with your FS50. If you want a little bit of boldness, um, like the sealed with a kiss copy here, the FS40 works really great. Rich, how about talking to us about logos again? Sure. Um, recently, um, I was contacted by uh, the LPGA to, to uh, digitize the, the Solheim Cup logo. Um, it's uh, the ladies' version of uh, the Ryder Cup for those of you um, who are not familiar with the golf world. But anyway, as you can see, this design is really small. I mean, with the, the dime and uh, next to it. And uh, anyway, the lady that contacted me from uh, the LPGA really wanted to have this uh, crystal cup uh, look special. And so anyway, I digitized it and everything so darn small. I had to use some 60 weight thread and a lot of this design. And originally I had the, um, I guess you could say the, the sculpting of the um, crystal uh, itself done with a, a really fine black thread. And it sewed okay and it looked okay, but it really just didn't look right. It just didn't come across well. And uh, the lady, she was okay with it, but really wasn't wasn't overjoyed with it. So I was uh, trying to decide what to do to maybe give it a little more pizzazz. Um, I did some blending with uh, this little tiny vase, and it was okay, but just didn't work out. And then I just decided, you know, I think I'm just going to substitute the black detail stitching with this um, metallic FS40 and in the silver. And uh, it just made this huge difference. And I didn't change anything in the design. I just switched the thread and ran it. And the lady was absolutely thrilled. And, and, and of course, uh, that was the end of the project. I didn't have to go any further with it. I didn't have to do anything special with it. But uh, that's where, again, experimenting with a thread uh, that's available, it's, it's amazing what you can, can come up with. And just this little bit of bling, uh, these pictures, if you see it in real life, it's, uh, as, as Nancy said, the, the pictures don't do it justice. It really does come across a lot more as a, as a crystal vase or whatever you want to call this thing, cup, I guess, trophy. 
uh, than it does here in these pictures. But um, I encourage you again to, to try this thread. It's, it's amazing what it can do. And Rich, what about your goldfish? Uh, this is a little different project here. Um, um, actually, this, this uh, particular design, I believe, is available uh, for you folks out there to uh, download and try yourself. Um, I, uh, when I'm doing um, metallic thread, um, a lot of times I like to uh, layer it. In other words, I, I put down light densities of uh, maybe a rayon thread or a polyester thread color, and then I'll go over the top of it, same stitch direction, um, in the fill, but I'll put a light fill of uh, metallic thread. And uh, rather than really uh, coming across really sharply as metallic can do all by itself, by blending it with rayon, it, it uh, just gives it a nice, real subtle, interesting look. And that's what I did on the tail section of this particular goldfish. Um, then in the main body of the goldfish, that's actually um, all uh, metallic FS40, the, the gold you see in the center. But um, what you can see is that I've used a, what they call a carved fill. Every software calls things a little differently. But basically what I do is uh, create the shape of the, of the fish. And then right before I generate the stitches, I can actually um, designate um, areas where the needle will actually drop a needle and leave a line. So what I did was I followed the scales of the artwork of, of the fish. And so that when it did the fill, um, it gives it that kind of lifelike um, look. And it's all just done by this uh, uh, carved fill or pattern fill that I created. But um, anyway, again, it's a matter of, uh, of your own imagination uh, and what, what, how far you want to take it. And using the carved fill certainly offered some interest. but. Uh, then again, blending the rayon with the metallic. In this particular case, I used three different metallics, um, different colors. And then, of course, with the final stitch, I did with a rayon, a dark brown. But uh, altogether, kind of a fun little design. And like I said, you're welcome to uh, try it out yourself and, um, and experiment and see what you think uh, color-wise. You might come up with different color combinations. But uh, anyway, this is what I came up with, and it was a lot of fun. Rich, just a, a quick question on the Solheim cup. What kind of fabric was that logo designed for? You know, most golf uh, merchandise is the is the dreaded um, performance piquet. <laughs> I uh -huh. call it dreaded because I think a lot of folks out there, me included, when it first came out is uh, kind of a challenge. Um, but it's a real kind of stretchy, 100% polyester material that's very thin, and uh, it's designed to to uh, be moisture wicking. Um, it's actually wonderful material to embroider on um, once you get used to it. And I think it's just a matter of, of getting used to uh, the different kinds of densities that you need to use and distortion values and digitizing and then of course using the correct backing. But that's what this design was digitized for um, and sewed well on. Okay, thank you. Um, some more designs using FS40, Nancy? Um, yep, I did have a couple of questions I wanted to answer before I went on to this design. Um, somebody did ask about bobbins. Yep, you just use your regular standard embroidery bobbins. So the bobbins you're currently using should um, work fine. Somebody asked about stabiliz stabilizer um, or backing, some people call it. Um, when it comes to metallic, keeping it soft, um, the fabric you're using, the backing you're using, helps that metallic run a little bit better. So using a cutaway backing and, you know, staying away from harsher, harsher fabrics, um, that helps that metallic run smooth as well. Um, we're going to have yeah, a little more. Yep, go ahead, Rich. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just <laughs> going to suggest that, like with the performance decay, I really like the Weblon uh, cutaway backing. It's really soft, it's sheer, uh, it doesn't show through the garment. Uh, and with the, the performance decay, oftentimes it's so thin that you can actually see a shadow of, of the uh, backing behind the, the garment, and that's not very attractive. Uh, the Weblon does not do that, and it's really, really good, uh, solid backing and works really well with metallic thread. I agree. Uh, that's probably probably my favorite back in the Easy Weblon no-show, um, especially for the piquets, but it works well for your small designs on any type of a fabric. Um, so getting on to the um, 
this design here, um, so when you think of country western, you think of rodeo, um, the, the garments that go along with those do have a lot of bling with them. Um, I always want to think about the rhinestone cowboy here, but um, there's definitely bling when it comes along, um, comes to that type of garments and designs and whatnot. So when I came across these spurs on Dakota's site, uh, again, thought this would be a great place to use the metallic, and FS40 worked really well here. On the bottom, I used mostly classic ran, except for the actual rowels, so that shape, uh, the, the star-shaped um, spinners on the end there. I put the metallic in there, but on the, um, the yoke there that goes around the heels is classic ran, two different kind of gold colors. And for the leather-looking straps, we had a poly-neon multicolor that I thought was really great. Um, and it really gave an appearance of kind of some worn-out leather there. So it looked nice. So I carried that up to the metallic one on the top. and But I switched out the yoke golds there um, for the heel, going around the heels there and put two different golds there. So FS40 is available in um, multiple different colored golds. So a third gold or bright yellow gold was used on the, the spinner there on the end. And the contrast between those three golds, um, I think, really made it stand out well. You can see that really well when you look at the blown up um, picture on the right hand side. Here's one more design. This is a pretty complex design, and I really had a lot of fun picking out the colors for this design here. Um, it's a gazing ball. Um, that just worked out really well. I loved it. I think um, I would, this design actually um, we chose to provide to you courtesy of Dakota Collectibles. This is going to be another design that will be available for you to download as well. So when I looked at this one, the stand, the stand for the ball itself in particular, I saw the potential to put the metallic there. I mean, obviously, um, when you see these things out there, they are on metal stands. So again, FS40 comes in multiple colors, and when it comes to the golds and silvers and a few other metals, a graphite um, dark, almost black color was used to outline the leaves in this on the stand, but a, um, a darker silver was used for the leaves. And when it's blown up like that, you can kind of see that. Inside the ball itself, the design that's in there, there's a um, bird bath there that was kind of white, concrete looking. But much like the teapot, we used a silver FS40 metallic to outline it, so it made it kind of stick out a little bit. Again, I threw a little bit of super twist in there on the lawn, so the shading that you're seeing on the bird bath and around the edge of the lawn, that was done in a super twist green, a little darker than the green on the grass, and a little difficult to see in the design itself. And then on the hosta flowers underneath the gazing ball, is um, a, the light purple is the classic ram, but I went to another metallic that um, is a thicker and it has a lot of jewel tones. So the purple there worked really well on that one. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this design is that rainbow effect that was um, attributed to the classic ram multicolor. Um, when you look at these gazing balls, if you've ever seen them out there very often, they kind of have a rainbow hue to them. Um, so adding that little bit of extra um, pizzazz there on top of the metallic, I think really made this design work well. Um, again, it's going to be available for you after the webinar. Um, the links will be coming within the email themselves. So I hope that you have as much fun with this design as I did. Here we have a very simple design, most uh, all running stitches here, so it lent itself well to the FS40 thread. And it's a fleur de lis, and again, the colors are available in this thread are not just golds and silvers, but you have some bronze, coppers, um, and the darker colors as well. So I chose that brown bronze here um, to switch out from the classic ran you see on the top. And on the bottom, it's blown up on the right-hand side, and again, it's on an angle to catch that um, the shine or the reflection of the light. Um, it really looked pretty this design. Here is one of Madeira's designs, and it's a pretty simple design. It's some blue daisies with some leaves and the stems. The, the daisies, as um, if you know your daisies, they come in almost every color under the rainbow, and we chose a nice pretty cornflower blue for the actual petals. So on the right-hand side, you're seeing classic rayon, all. 
um, put some gold or a couple of different gold yellows there for the inside of the flower and outline the petals themselves. But on the right hand side, we, we stayed with that blue and the greens in the classic grand, but switched over to a couple of um, different metallic golds there for the FS40. And then we literally put some metal on the petal uh, for this design in particular. And you can actually see where it outlined the green leaves as well. So I added a little bit more pizzazz there as well. Um, this is a really pretty design has a lot of opportunities for a lot of different threads and colors, so we wanted to make this one available for you after the webinar as well um, to choose to um, play around with a little metallic. Before moving on to our third thread, um, one question that came in that certainly Nancy and Rich, who do embroider, can answer better than I can, but the question is, what machines can you use metallic thread on? Um, to me, this question is kind of the same as what car should I drive in order to have the least amount of accidents? Um, you're very, very, very much depending on the operator um, as opposed to the machine. Um, and Nancy's shaking her head yes. So Rich, if you could address this, but also Nancy, um, I'll, I think we need to let our, our visitors know that they should not be thinking that, oh my gosh, I can't use metallic thread because of the machine that they're using. Well, I guess if I'm going to provide some input there, I'm, I'm not a machine expert, but um, I know that there are some machines that you can buy out there that claim to run, that you can run stitches, you know, run your machine at 1,100 stitches per minute or whatever. And I, you know, it's kind of like the automobile. You know, just because your speedometer says it'll, you can do 120, uh, you usually don't drive your car 120 miles an hour. And, and so I think speed is probably the crucial thing. Um, uh, and with metallic thread, not so much with FS50 uh, and 40, but as a general rule, metallic thread, you really don't want to run your machine too fast. And, and I say too fast. I mean, I have uh, three machines, and I run them at 650 to 700 stitches per minute with a regular thread. And to be honest with you, I don't slow my machines down for metallic, and I haven't had any trouble. But... But again, I guess speed is all relative. I don't run my machines at 1,000 stitches per minute either, regardless of whether it's metallic or regular. In terms of what your machine is capable of, um, there is no special setup that I know of. Uh, your needle depth and all the regular settings that a tech would have to make, uh, you don't have to necessarily do anything special for metallics. Um, um, I mean, I suppose you could probably get down to some real fine uh, tuning of your machine if you're running some real heavy metallics. But altogether, you know, these are designed to be able to just to be substituted and run on almost any machine. So I think probably speed is the key thing. Uh, tensioning. Um, I know we're going to talk about this later, but uh, generally as you go heavier in your metallic thread, uh, you're going to go lighter in your upper thread tensions. and. Uh, I'm a big fan of using tension gauges. Some people don't, but I do. And I like it just to, for a reference point so that I know whether uh, I'm getting a nice, even tension. A gauge will tell you that, whereas pulling on it not, may not necessarily do that. But basically, all you're really trying to do is to make sure it runs smoothly off your machine. And I haven't really run across anybody that's saying that there, you know one particular machine won't run metallic thread. So, um, you know... I don't know if that really answers your question, but that, uh, like I said, I, I don't think that the, just because you have brand X machine doesn't necessarily mean that you're, you should be excluded from uh, running metallic thread. Yeah, that's, I couldn't agree with exactly you more. exactly the uh, point we're trying to make, Rich. And um, a lot of questions are coming in on tension and density and needle. Um, everybody, we're just trying to push along here, um, introducing you to these four threads. And at the towards the end of the webinar, we've got charts and graphs and, and more technical data, so stick with us. And um, I think that all of these questions will be answered. Um, also, as Nancy mentioned, we will be collecting every single question that comes in and sending everybody that registered for the webinar the question and the answer. Um, I think at this point we're going to move on to our third uh, metallic thread that we're talking about today, which is Super Twist number 30. This is, a, this is a shimmering metallic that really sparkles with life. This is the showstopper when we have stitch outs with Super Twist at trade shows. 
Um, because of the way this thread is produced with a twist instead of a wrap of metal, it gives a textured effect and literally sparkles instead of shines. There's a wide color selection, including solid colors, multis, opals, and crystals. And this, with this particular metallic, the Super Twist 30, we do suggest you change your needle to a number 9014 in order for it to run properly. Let's take a look at some designs with Super Twist and what you think, what you should think about when choosing them. Nancy? Um, sure, here is another design. It is actually a pretty complex design. It's about six inches by seven inches, um, and it has over 41,000 stitches and 38 color changes. So um, with 38 color changes, you can imagine that was a little bit of a challenge um, in and of itself. However, when I saw this design, I saw the metal watering can there and easily and I could see it had some layering over and that's where super twist actually works best in my opinion um, so the the watering can was done in a nice gray to imply that it is a, a silver or metallic can itself but by putting the layering part in the super twist it really highlighted that gray classic gray in itself you can see it when it's blown up very sharp, um, shimmering and sparkly on the handle and even on the upper edge um, rim of the watering can is a darker silver um, super twist. Had a real nice um, impact there and it's also on the spout of the watering can too. In addition to that, on the outer borders was a um, darker metallic and a different type of metallic thread, but in the bottom you can see the gold super twist um, flowers there. So again, we put some metal on the petal and um, pretty complex design, um, but worked really well with Super Twist. Alice mentioned before that you do want to run a, a larger needle here um, because it is a thicker thread and because of the special makeup of it, it requires a larger eye for it to pass through in order for it to run well. Again, knowing where this thread works well is what we're hoping to achieve here. Um, so for a, a stock design that you might purchase online, there are many opportunities to put the different metallic threads in. So going up a size for that super twist um, for the needle itself is well worth um, the changing of that needle there. Uh, the material for this one was just a simple um, woven kind of twill type fabric. Here's another stock design, again, um, one of Dakota Collectibles design, so on that country western or rodeo um, style here, I chose this Arabian horse here, um, thought it was really great, a really nice looking design. Um, simply put, it's, it's got a basic um, background behind it, a classic rayon with two shadings that are on top of it. So on the upper left hand corner is the smaller version of it, it's blown up a little bit to give you some um, uh, better look at the metallic super twist thread here. I chose again. I stuck with the classic rand for the fill on the horse itself, but for the shading, I chose a nice silver super twist that you can see on the cheek of the horse and running down the neck. But the second color was especially nice and worked out really well here because it acted like an outline stitch. And our buddy Rich here, he uh, mentioned this quite a while to me, and I, it really stuck with me how using an outline stitch um, it's much like drawing um, when you're drawing you use that um, darker pencil in order to put the detail in there this is actually a super twist and you can see the sparkling in the in the horse's eye and i thought that worked out really well and gave him a little bit of a gleam here um, so as, as opposed to fs30 this is super twist 30 so a different type of thread than the fs30 um, this one the a little bit thicker of a thread and a different type. Here's a couple of simple designs um, that again were on Dakota's site and I they're very similar designs so I did similar things to them. So on the left hand side we have a moon setting over a lake and reflecting in the lake. So the moon itself is done in classic rayon with like a netting. There was a, a shading or another color that was added on top of there. So I put the super twist there, but I also put it on top of the lake. So when it reflected in the lake, um, anybody that's been out on a dark night and seeing that moon reflecting on the, the lake kind of gave it a true effect. On the, the lily that's on the right side, I especially like the way that this one reflected in the water. Um, it's a white super twist that was done on top of a classic rayon, kind of a royal blue. 
And the way that those two colors mixed really gave it a true effect. Um, it really looks like the lily sitting on the water and reflecting. Rich, another logo, please. Sure. Um, this is an, another corporate logo. I, I have a number of wineries around my um, where I live, and so um, I do a lot of the, those type of logos. And this particular one, um, I hope they're not listening, but I didn't think their logo was really that interesting, uh, at least the printed version. Um, wonderful thing about, of course, embroidery is that it's dimensional, so it automatically gives life to uh, otherwise uh, sort of flat appearing logos. But to uh, add an um, interest to this logo, I just went ahead and uh, tried the opal super twist um, color as a kind of a layering effect over the top of um, the top part of the bottle and then over the uh, grapes uh, pile down below. And um, it really kind of added some like a subtle um, sparkle to it. And like I said, it was just kind of an experiment. I really didn't know what it was going to look like, but the customer really liked it. And again, it's a relatively easy thing to do. Usually, like I said, uh, we'll talk about it later, but a digitizing for uh, a heavier weight uh, metallic like Super Twist, it's best to keep your stitch length longer. And then I, uh, we talk about density. I like a lighter density of about 10 or 20% lighter than normal. Um, everybody's software calculates digit or density separately differently, so it's kind of hard to be specific, but uh, whatever it is, if you can, uh, your standard density setting is, if it's 4.0, for example, is a standard density setting, then you want to run it like 6.0 uh, for uh, for Super Twist, and, um, and, and then it just seems to run a little bit better, but it's not to say you can't run a little bit tighter density, but you have to experiment with it to see how it works. But generally speaking, a little bit uh, lighter density and longer, longer stitch length work really well. And in this particular case, like I said, that's all I did, and it ran really well and added some interest to the design. Thank you, Rich. Um, now we're going to take a look at uh, Soft 40. And we actually have one more um, Super Twist design uh, that we Sorry. want to look at real quick. This is a kind of a again, and it comes into what somebody just wrote in. This was again a stock design, and classic rayon colors were chosen for this. Um, however, for the purple pom pom looking flowers, I threw the Super Twist um, purple in there, and for the gold parts, I threw in some FS40. So I went back to one of the other threads that we talked about. So um, again, just a, a simple stock design and I, I chose a couple different colors or a couple different threads to switch right in there. Now we're going to look at this off 40 which is um, the last of the four metallics that we're really concentrating on today or in order to give you some examples of each and then to go into some of the specifics of running them. Um, soft 40 is the economically priced metallic thread that was mentioned earlier. This thread consists of a soft rayon core, which guarantees a smooth and gentle touch even in large fill areas. A special finish allows embroidering at high speeds, and in fact, in a fast-paced multi-head shop, this might be your go-to metallic thread. Here, too, we suggest swapping out your everyday needle, this time for a number 8012, because just that little bit of extra space going through the eye of the needle will make life easier. While the design is soft to the touch, the back side of the garment is not. That was a question that came in a little bit earlier as well. What if the metallic threads are leaving a scratchy feel on the back of the garment? Um, this is something that Nancy will be sharing, a suggestion of how to finish the back of the garments that contain metallic thread that will be worn against the skin just a little bit later. Let's look now at um, a couple of designs that were done with 40 weight thread. Um, okay, so we have a really pretty design here. This is actually quite large. It's 7 inches by almost 10 inches tall, but it's a single stitch design, and it has those satin stitches and running stitches that works really well with the metallic threads. Um, so really pretty design, um, and it would look great in a rayon or a polyester. However, um, I chose this particular design to run with the soft 
40 thread and it worked really great. Um, even in the design on the left where it's not blown up, you can see the body of the butterfly reflecting the light. You can see it even better on the right where it is blown up and the one down below it as well. Um, this thread uh, available in a couple different silvers and uh, multiple golds. Um, so it gives you the ability to do some shading within the metallics themselves, but you can use it with a classic gray or polyester as well. Um, the next design is um, all running stitches, and this is another watering can with a bunch of metal, a um, bunch of flowers on it as well. So it's kind of like a square framed picture here. And again, those running stitches worked really well. Soft metallic, just showing you a different gold here um, that the soft metallic comes in as well. The next design is just um, another one that was has the gold and a silver on the outline. Um, it's not available in the colors, so the red and the orange that you've seen in the center, those are classic rayon. Um, and the colors themselves kind of played off of each other and thought it made a really nice contrast between the gold and the silver too. Um, blown up, you can see the reflection again. And um, again, a lot of satin stitches here worked really well. Um, Alice just mentioned this earlier, and this is finishing the back of embroidered finish design. So when you're working with metallic, sometimes the back, um, those little threads that do stick out, sometimes they can be a little scratchy. So when you're wearing it on the skin, it can be irritating, especially if you do have sensitive skin. Um, so available by Madeira, we have two different brands that you can choose from. One is Easy Comfort Wear, and the other one is Easy Weblon No-Show Fusible. This, the second one is very similar to your Easy Weblon No-Show product that you'd use for your performance wear. However, this one does have a heat-activated adhesive on one side and the other side smooth. The Easy Comfort Wear is much the same. It's a little bit silkier feeling to me um, and that the easy comfort wear is what you see on the back side of a lot of your children's wear um, so if your children's wear has embroidery you look on the back side you're going to see a little piece of white fabric that's been adhered and it has a real shiny uh, soft feel to it so you simply um, lay this over the top of any design like you see on the spurs and you put the adhesive side down trace it about a half an inch wider and give it some rounded corners. Um, make sure it's not too pointy because sometimes those points will come off during the laundering. And um, trace it, cut it out inside the line, lay it right on top of the back side of the embroidery and use a heat press or an iron. And you can adhere that on there very nicely. Thank you, Nancy. Um, there are a lot of questions coming in, which we think is great. We, um, some of these questions are general, some of them are very specific, but again, want to remind you that we'll be answering them all, and all questions and answers will be going out to all of you. Um, at this point, Nancy and Rich want to share some tips that they have for you. Um, and again, if your specific question is not going to be answered, we're trying to be respectful of your time and finish up on time. So please hang in with us and you will be getting um, answers to your question shortly. But let's go through um, with Nancy and Rich on some general uh, ways in order to get the most cooperation from your machine. Okay, so first but not least is make sure that you're always using fresh needles. Um, as you saw, most of the needles um, are gonna be your regular size needle. Make sure you're changing them, and that doesn't all only um, come in when it comes to metallic threads, when you're rayon, polyester, your everyday embroidery, and you do wanna make sure you're always using fresh needles, especially on the high-speed industrial machines. They go really fast, and the eyes of those needles will wear out over time. Sometimes they're giving you um, trouble before you, they break. So you want to pay attention to that. Um, so if you're using metallic threads, always start out with a fresh needle. And I think a needle selection is pretty, pretty basic, really. It's the heavier the thread you're using. In other words, the lower the number of the metallic thread, the larger the needle you want to use. And then also what you're sewing on. Um, it's the same thing applies with regular thread. If you're embroidering on something like a cap, then you're going to want to use a sharp needle. And if you're embroidering on uh, something like an, a knit, a sweatshirt material or t-shirt, then you'll want to use more of a ballpoint needle. But um, in, in terms of, of, uh, of what to use, I think you can experiment with that. Um, sometimes 
if I'm having a little bit of trouble with uh, running a design, um, just by going up in size in the needle corrects the problem. And so it's not just the eye of the needle and how easy it is to get the thread uh, to, to, to go through it. It's also the needle uh, penetration hole. If, if uh, sometimes there's friction that can be caused between the thread itself and the material that you're sewing, and if there's a little bit too much friction, in other words, the hole that's being generated by the needle is not large enough, then you can experience some problems. Well, just by going up in size and needle, you're actually putting a little bit bigger hole and making it easier for the thread to pass through the material. And that oftentimes fixes 90% of the problems. Um, then we go into tensioning, and we can talk about that. And everybody sets tensions, I think, a little differently. Like I said, I'm kind of a, a nut for gauges. but Typically, I think um, with, with any metallics, you want to lighten your, your, your tensions as much as you can. Um, what I'm looking for really is a nice, steady tension. In other words, I don't want an erratic kind of reading or a pulsating kind of feel when I pull the thread through the needle. And so that's kind of what I'm looking for. Ultimately, you want to see what it looks like on the back of the embroidery, and you want a nice balance, obviously, in tension between your upper thread tension, that being in this case metallic thread or, or even rayon or polyester, and that balance of what looks like underneath when you see the, uh, the uh, bobbin. And the one-third, two-thirds rule um, certainly applies. But uh, a lot of that, again, is you have to do some testing, and then you can make notes of what works best on your particular machine. Um, in terms of digitizing, uh, I can recommend that with the heavier metallics especially, uh, really, you don't need much underlay at all. So if you're doing a, a large area, like a, well, in some cases, I think really a fill stitches are probably not the ideal type of, of stitch type that you'd use for the heavier metallics, although it's done. Uh, but you don't need much underlay. But when you're doing like uh, satin stitches, um, again, just a simple travel uh, um, running stitch underlay is all that's needed. Um, because you're not looking at that kind of uh, uh, benefit of the underlay that you normally do with regular thread. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, um, if you're doing your own digitizing, those are great tips. Um, as far as if you if you want to just use the stock designs, then you just need to know the design's limitations. Um, so putting in a lot of fill in one area, so if it's a design that was digitized for classic or a rayon or polyester 40, it might be a little tight for your for these four threads that we've been talking about today. So knowing those limitations, we pointed out some of the, a lot of the satin stitches, a lot of the running stitches. If it's an overlay of um, shadowing, works really well with these threads. So knowing those limitations is is really important if you're choosing stock designs. And if and you... Uh, I was just going to say, most of the time, these stock designs, like she showed in that pretty horse that we saw, the uh, Arabian horse or whatever, but there was, she did a, uh, Nancy chose a, a, a metallic thread on the, the head of the horse, and it was done as an overlay, so it's deliberately already a light density because the digitizer wanted to just suggest an additional color on the head of the horse, and so it worked perfectly for a metallic thread because it's already, again, a very light density. But if you are not a digitizer and you have a design that you want to try and maybe you're a little bit worried about it being too dense, uh, one thing you can do is just enlarge the, the stitch file. And what I mean by that is in most embroidery machines, on the machine itself, you can actually enlarge the design. And I would say 10 or 20 percent is usually all that's needed. And then you can, it'll make running some of these metallics much easier. Um, I say you can also enlarge a design in your softwares that are available, uh, but you have to be careful because a lot of software automatically recalculates um, stitch areas and changes the density. And of course, that's not what you're after. What you want to do is enlarge the design and effectively spread the stitches apart a little bit, which is also, in effect, lightening the density, which is what your end goal is. So either way, I think probably the easiest is to do it on your embroidery machine. But if your software allows you to enlarge the design without adjusting the density, then you can do that as well. Okay, thank you. 
Um, so this, this chart here is going to answer a lot of the questions that have come through during the webinar. And we're just focusing on the four threads that we talked about today. On the top, you see the FS Metallic 50 and the FS Metallic 40. Very similar designs, the 50 being slightly thinner, the 40 weight being a slightly thicker. Um, you can see the range of those needles goes from 65 to 80. 65.9 to 80.12, um, and those are very um, very common. The 75.11 is what most embroiderers do use on a regular basis with the rayon and polyester. Um, so you see you really don't need to change your needles. If you're using a 65.9, stay with it. If you're using a 75.11, stay with it. Rich mentioned um, going to a larger needle sometimes makes a slightly larger penetration hole, and it helps that metallic thread run a little bit um, better. So if that's your your issue that you're running into, go ahead and um, choose the larger of those two. But as you can see, very similar. And this will be in the email. This is going to be available for you afterwards. Um, on the bottom two tier here, we have the Super Twist 30, that special twisted metallic. Um, that one you do um, want to use a larger needle, and I personally recommend the 9014 needle here. Um, that larger hole, again, helps that thread run really well. And going up to that larger needle is well worth um, um, having those on hand and taking the time to switch it over. The effect that you get with a super twist, well worth it. The soft metallic thread, the more economical, um, with a limited amount of colors, does need a slightly larger needle. Um, so if you're using a 7511, you might want to go up to that 8012. The special makeup of this particular um, metallic thread runs much better with that larger eye needle. When it comes to the points of the needle, that's where your fabric comes into play. So up above, we're telling you what size to use with the thread. Down below, we're going to tell you what fabrics are going to choose the point. So ballpoint needles are what most it covers most of your embroidery needs. So your knits, your polos, and things like that, or your lightly woven, so your Oxford shirts, that type of thing are going to be a ballpoint needle. That ballpoint needle tends to push fabric aside as it's um, going through, as opposed to cutting it, um, what a sharp needle will do. Um, a sharp needle, you really only need that for your heavy woven fabrics. So you're talking about denims, um, canvas, or else known as duck cloth. Um, anything that's tightly woven or it's a heavy fabric itself, um, that also includes your caps that you're embroidering on those very um, tightly woven Fabric's kind of thick, and you tend to be going through a lot of material when you're embroidering a cap. So that sharp needle is going to help you out there. We're trying to rush a little bit now. We've, we've taken up an hour of your time, and we just have a little bit left to go. But just to reassure you, uh, the webinar is being um, recorded. Uh, there will also be PDFs that will be printable for you. So if you see a chart or a list or bullets that you want to hang on to, you'll be able to download those on your own. Uh, once you've mastered today's four, the FS50, 40, Super Twist 30, and the Soft 40, here are four more metallic threads that Madeira has to offer that are worth taking a look at. Um, these, these can be problem solvers because there's very specific attributes to each. Um, at the upper left is a FS20. It's a very thick uh, metallic thread. It's used for a vintage look, uh, for outlines and accents. This particular metallic is very soft on the, on the skin, so it is known for its softness, but it is thicker, so you would um, have a little bit more to consider with it. Uh, FS35 is a thicker thread also for a faster filling thread. It gives a bold look, and it's used for decorative seams. FS30 is probably the most abrasion-resistant metallic thread on the market. There was a question about the possibility of putting uh, metallic threads into wash water that contains bleach. Uh, this does stand up to bleach. FS30 is the metallic thread that you would use if you were um, doing any product that would be subjected to commercial laundering. And then the FS45, another example where Rich has um, put in some um, metallic thread into a logo in order to make it very special, um, also very well liked by the, the customer that he was doing that for. Um, here we just have a, a design that kind of shows you the difference that you can, uh, different looks you can achieve by choosing not only different colors, but different um, fabrics as well. So on the left side, you have kind of a fantasy looking um, design there. 
looking design, I should say, with those fl that fluorescent green and the other colors that are there, and a little more um, goth looking, I guess you could say, on the right hand side with the purples and the black fabric. Um, four different types of threads were used here. FS40, we spoke in detail, that thicker FS20 was used. Classic 40 is included in there as well, but Vermilana 12 is a wool blend, real thick thread. And just a, giving you a, a, a quick peek at what can be done. So don't be afraid to combine the threads and experiment with color itself. You can get totally different looks. Just another example of choosing different threads, different colors um, to get a different look. The, the four flowers on the outside are mostly classic rayon with a little bit of um, super twist on the petals. And FS50 was used in the center of some, FS40 was used in the center of others. And it just gives it a little bit different of a look. And the middle one has bromelana on the inside. So it's a slightly different design. Um, and slightly different look for a very similar looking design. We're going to pause here briefly just to show you um, the designs that are going to be made uh, downloadable for you. We're very, very close to the end now. We, we appreciate your patience and hanging in there. Um, these are the designs that will be given to you at no charge to thank you for attending and in hopes that you'll give some of these metallic threads a try. Um, thank you to Rich and our friends at Dakota Collectibles and Madeira, Germany for allowing us to share these, these designs with you. Remember that while we believe metallic threads have a place 365 days a year, the holidays for 2015 are just around the corner. Now is the time to master even some of the metallic embroidery threads Madeira has to offer and to see how easily many will fit into your stock holiday designs. Well, we hope that Nancy, Rich, and the rest of us have instilled you with confidence. Uh, we're going to compile all the questions as we've been trying to reassure you, and we'll answer all of them, um, along with the details for the special offer that both Dakota Collectibles and Madeira USA would like to extend. We want to thank you for your time, and we want to encourage you to try these metallic threads. We hope that you've been inspired. And while we don't wish anybody any downtime, when or if things slow down a bit is the perfect time to try something new. Watch for several emails that are going to be coming from us. A quick survey that will let us know if we've succeeded in our goals today. The complete questions and answers, two special offers, and a link to revisit the webinar. If you would like to review anything, either as a video or um, as individual sheets. Thank you so much for your time today. We apologize for going over a little bit. Please be in touch if we can help in any way. Thank you.